Hello, I'm Becky and welcome back to my channel. I hope we're all well. I think time this is uploaded once it's been edited after all my trips, it's probably gonna be after the summer. So I hope you all had a beautiful summer. I have had a jam packed summer, hence why the work to trip balance, the ratio has been so off. But anyway, this summer I traverse north to south of Iceland on this bike here with all the stuff that you can see. And I was just gonna talk about the kit I took with me, the bike I took and stuff I'd recommend taking again or wouldn't take again that sort of thing. I had an absolutely amazing time. It was a very, very tough trip. It was extremely difficult. There was hurdles each day, but it was beautiful. It was something like I've never experienced before. The landscape, the isolation, just seeing lava fields, volcanoes, and being so desolate um, and sort of isolated from people was extreme. If you want to have a look at it, it's called the Iceland Divide and you'll find it on bikepacking.com and a few other people have ridden the route. It's a recommended fat bike route, so there's a lot of sand, there's a lot of lava fields, there's lots of hiker bike and you have to carry all your own food for the trip. So I took 12 days of food with me because I just wanted enough. I didn't want to be relying or running out just in case of an emergency like river crossings are in spate so I have to wait or the weather would delay me which it did so that was in hindsight such a great move taking more food than i needed so yeah the video of my trip will be up next week hopefully um, and i will be doing a film on the trip itself it'll probably be a long video anyway let's crack on this is everything i took like i said to do the iceland divide it is 344 mile trip north to south of iceland's interior i managed to do the trip I did it solo and unsupported and it took me 12 days, including two rest days. I had very gnarly weather, I had extreme river crossings and it was very eventful but all this stuff held up and that's why I'm making this video because everything here I really really recommend. This isn't a sponsored video, this is just stuff I took with me and I really got on well with and stuff that I wouldn't recommend again. Right, so starting with the bike itself, I took a specialized Epic hardtail comp in this beautiful green color. This is a hardtail, like I said, it's a mountain bike. A lot of people run fat bikes for this route just because of the sand and the chunkier tires that can handle it. This handled it perfectly. Obviously there's sections where I'd have had to walk more, where someone on thicker tires wouldn't have to. These are two point three fives I think it is and they're 29ers and then I just took semi aggressive tires that performed very nicely and these were the, just the stock ones that come with the bike when you get it. The Epic is a one by, the drivetrain is all SRAM components, uh, hydraulic brakes, um, obviously front suspension. I will leave all the specs and stuff here if you're interested or a link in the description so you can go check it out because I've really found it interesting what bikes people are running for Iceland because it's obviously quite diverse and it's covering terrain that you don't often see. I met someone on a gravel bike and they punctured their tire wall because it's narrow tires so you're more susceptible to puncture your tire walls. I luckily didn't get a puncture, which I was so thankful for. And I'm really shocked because you're obviously going over sharp lava, you're going over rocks. It's, you th you'd think you'd get a puncture, but I was all good. I'm running tubeless instead of inner tubes, which I think is the way forward. I think it's the way to go. So yeah, that's that. The only thing that I have changed was I changed my grips. I've gone for Ergon grips. You get little outcrops here so that you can change your hand positioning. And after that trip, I decided I wanted a different saddle. So I've put a new saddle on there. It's one of the mirror technology ones, a specialized one. And that is fab, it's absolutely brilliant. I was riding a saddle that was a bit too narrow. I think it was 144 millimeters. So I've gone up to 155 millimeters and that's much more comfier. And as you can see here, I am running TT bars and this is for the trip that I'm setting off in four days time. Uh, so I'm literally gonna do this load out, a quick turn around and pack everything for my next trip in four days. I've not filmed a load out for a long, long time, so bear with me and I'm trying not to waffle. But quickly going through some of the stuff, helmet, obviously take a helmet, glasses. This was the most essential thing ever. If you're doing cycling in general, 
to get a pair of wraparound glasses. If I didn't have these, I think I would have scratched my, my eyes because the sandstorms were like nothing I've ever experienced. And you see it on films, you see it on, on your phone or wherever, but you don't, you've never seen it in person. and I thought it's always over-exaggerated. I experienced a couple of sandstorms and oh my goodness, these were worth every penny because they protected my eyes. So over to helmet, I am now running a head torch. This is an exposure light and I'm running it for the trip I'm about to go on now. Obviously Iceland, it never gets dark, so I didn't use this. I took it in case I'd be riding in fog or I'd be on the road at the last section of the trip and just to be seen. This light is the Exposure Light Diablo. It is very bright, it's got a long battery life and it charges in about four hours. I think the battery life's up to eight depending on what level you put it on, but I'll leave a link to that. Exposure Lights are probably one of the best light companies you can get for bike packing, uh, cycling, mountain biking, whatever you're doing. Over to shoes. I took cleats for this trip. A lot of people recommend you don't take cleats because there's a lot of walking, uh, there's river crossings, there's sam riding i've ridden cleats since i was 10 years old so i just i'm really comfortable in cleats and i've always ridden in them so it'd feel more foreign not riding cleats these are the specialized recon cleats with the boa adjustment here one thing i'd say about these is narrow i think pretty much all cleats are really narrow i'm used to wearing barefoot shoes so i ended up losing my little toenail on this trip which was pretty painful, really sore. I took these also, these are, I think sand just come out of them. These are the Vivo Barefoot Hydras. These are barefoot shoes. These are their designated water shoes. And I took these for uh, hike a bike, but also river crossings because I knew there were so many river crossings. Most days I ended up just wearing these and couldn't be asked to keep changing in and out of two sets of shoes just for rivers. There was that many rivers in the end, you'd just be on and off constantly and losing so much time. But these were fab and I ended up riding in these a lot of the time, even with the, just the SBD pedals. In hindsight, I'd get the pedals where you can have flat pedals, but it's also got the SBD attachment also, just so you've got a bit of both to play with. Okay, now we've come to the cockpit. So like I was saying earlier, I've got the Ergon grips which are so so comfortable so up front i've got an apertura handlebar bag and an apertura like little storage bag that clips onto that these are fully waterproof and a really rugged material i fell into a river and these got completely submerged this stayed dry this somehow filled up with water i don't know if it was via the zip maybe i left the zip open a tiny bit i wasn't expecting to fully fall in this river this stayed fully dry and i'm glad it did because inside here I've got my quilt, my sleep system. So for my sleep system, I took a Enlightened Equipment Enigma 850 quilt, and I got this from Valley and Peak. I have completely converted to quilts just because the ease, how much lighter they are, they're a little bit compact because you don't have the wasted back space that you would on a sleeping bag and the massive hood. This is a minus six quilt and it is so warm. Often, a lot of the time in Iceland, I couldn't actually get into the quilt. I'd have to leave it as a quilt and not cinch it around my back. This is the Thermarest Neo Air Roll Mat. This is super comfy. I think I've got the short regular size and I will put the R value and everything here, but this was brilliant. And lastly, in the handlebar bag, I have got an Enlightened Equipment Synthetic Jacket. I think the way to go if you're traveling in the UK or damp climates is definitely synthetic. That is the Enlightened Equipment Torrid Jacket. This is the women's one and they fold up pretty small and they are very warm. As well, I took this. It's a specialized down jacket and I would wear this underneath that when it was really cold some nights. I just felt very chilly um, when I was in my tent or in an evening in a hut. Right, moving on to the extra bag that can be added on. This was the most accessible bit while I was riding, I guess. I had gloves, montane gloves, 
that are like proper winter gloves and I had to wear these a couple of times because it was so cold. A bug net because the bugs there are awful. I took a Dyna plug. Like I said, I'm running tubeless tires. This is for my GoPro or my camera, my Sony camera that I'm filming on now. And it just clips to your bars or just anywhere you can sort of mount it. A waterproof phone cover, a quad lock case for my phone. A trowel, which doesn't come in handy in Iceland because it's all either really soft sand or really hard lava. And then <laughs> I took a pair of like latex gloves to go over my warm gloves. And this was such a good idea because it meant I had waterproof gloves. Yeah, I think that's it. I also had my first day kit in here also. I used a Wahoo bike computer, literally just download my route onto here and I navigated using that and then I have these food pouches as you can see and in one of them I had bars just raw velo bars these are like organic energy bars um, and gels I had in there and just snacks so you're just grazing while she go along and in the other uh, food pouch I had a catadine water filter which is how I filtered my water these are brilliant they're carbon filters right so that was my cockpit setup now on to my top tube bag this is a tail fin top tube bag uh, which is brilliant and you can actually leave a power bank in here and there's a little hole here where you can bring a wire through and charge stuff while you're on the move inside the top tube bag I have got a Swiss Army knife, a little Bic lighter, lots of bars, raw velo bars again and a gel block just in case I was at a hut and wanted to get a fire going um, because you're not getting many outdoor fires going in Iceland because it's literally just rock and sand there's no trees good old Vikings cut them down that had a lot more snacks in but they've obviously all been eaten. Also going back to my cockpit setup, I would rest a solar panel on top of my handlebar bag and clip it on with these carabiners. Uh, this would get me a minimum of one phone charge per day, even if it was extremely overcast. And the maximum I would get was two dots back on my power bank. So that's probably about two phone charges pushing three. Right, so moving on to the frame bag, this is also a tail fin frame bag um, and you can customize these on the size of your frame. So via the website, there's a really cool feature where you can take a photo of your frame from a distance and then you can, you can get one of the frame bags and sort of virtually put it onto your bike to see what fits the best and how it looks before you buy it. Um, and I thought that was really cool. But this has two sides, so this is the smaller side and it has this really nice material. And in here I have got cable ties, quite a few cable ties and spare spokes. Via the other side I've got a chain cloth just to keep your chain moving. This is the whole point of cycling is using your drive chain, your chain, your cogs, everything. So I feel like it's a essential to keep everything clean and running. I have got a little multi-tool um, with all the various Allen keys that I need and a hex key and also a chain link tool. In here I've also got a little pouch. I've got all essentials in here such as a spare derailleur hanger. I've got tyre levers, one wrapped in black tape. I have got spare brake pads. I have got spare bolts for my uh, panniers. A little repair kit in there. Chain links like I just said. Spare valves, a spoke key. What else have we got in here? We have got a uh, gear cable, a bike lock. That I took with me I really don't need something this big and I might replace it because it is really chunky as you can see little repair kit and also I took a toothpaste wrapper which was going to be uh, my tire boot in case my tire wall broke or tore I was going to fit this in chain lube and I think that's it for in there right moving on She's so pretty. I love this setup. I think the bike looks really good with the bags. I'm really happy with it. I had this bottle here 
as my electrolytes bottle and I would fill it up with electrolytes each day so I'd be getting my salt back and all my essentials instead of just water, just plain water. I'd love to have a frame bag that's customised for my little frame um, just to have for water and extra storage but this is what I struggle with with uh, smaller frames it's just so difficult to get everything mounted onto it hence why I go with fork bags right now my down tube bag which is filled with more spares that's the thing with bike packing you have to carry so many spares compared to hiking but in here I have got super glue which is an essential this was really good for um, I helped someone fix their repair mat, their thermos had got a hole in it, the valve had like damaged so they used that. Someone else used it for their tent, it ripped the material as well as this tape, they used some of that also. So yeah, that's really good to have, especially if like tyre wall problem or pieces of kit break, it's just good to have. I've also got this little repair kit from Valley and Peak and it's tape as well as a sewing kit which is awesome. And that's in there, as well as a Thermarest repair kit and my tyre boots that I was saying earlier that I didn't have. I've got spare cleats in case something happens to my cleats. I've got another bottle of sealant if it will come out. There we go, another bottle of sealant. As I said, I'm running tubeless. And then I think it's just, yeah, I've got two 29er uh, inner tubes in there. Moving on, we have got another tail fin bag. As you can see, I've mostly gone for tail fin products because they are super waterproof. When I said I fell in that river, I also fell in with all these bags and they kept everything fully waterproof, which I was really shocked at. What I like also is with normal panniers, they rattle like hell and often they can snap, they can fall off, they can be a right drama. This does not move, it's same with the back. They are absolutely solid. They quickly just pop off like normal panniers. This is a tail fin system that allows you to have fork bags as well. Obviously you don't get holes in uh, front suspension forks. So this is just like an adapter. So you, it allows you to mount front um, fork bags, which is amazing. These are both 10 litre pannier bags. I had two at the front, two at the rear, as you can see. And let's have a look what I took in these. This one was full of my tent. So this is my tent outer. I took the Big Agnes Copper Spur Ultralight One bike packing tent. And the reason it's a bike packing tent is because the poles are a lot shorter than the usual ones that you get. So that means they can fit in your pannier bags easier and or on your handlebars or just they're more compact for fitting onto your bike. This tent I've used a lot. I took it to Canada last year. I took it to Sweden last year. I never used it in the wind, like proper wind anyway. And I was very nervous. And I used it in 50 mile per hour winds plus gusts that got up to 70. And I was very, very nervous. The tent held up to it, which was absolutely brilliant. This is an awesome tent. I really love it. It's a solo tent. It's a one man. Uh, it's got an amazing bug net. It's got a really cool inside with a hammock system that you can put all your clothes and like just places to store things, which is really cool when you're sort of living out your tent and you want a dry kit, you want to store things in places. I also took these to Iceland, which are these extreme pegs. They are for sand or for snow. And these were actually really good in the sandy places. When it was rocky and lava fields, these didn't work at all you were better using the thinner pegs that come with the tent but for the sand these were brilliant they would dig right in and they would be solid that's a whole bag full of my tent I could get it compact a bit more which I'm going to try to for this trip coming up the next fork bag contained food and I've eaten a lot of it now but I took these for breakfast and I took 12 of these so you can imagine <laughs> how much food I had. 
So I took 12 of these. These are real termat chocolate muesli, which are 439 calories. So I was on a huge deficit for this trip, but there's only so much food you can carry. I took another filter and a Chinook bag. Right, I am climbing back over because my camera tells me I yap too much. Um, so yeah, another filter, another litre of water. I took a little cup as I needed a luxury and that luxury was going to be coffee. And I really, really love this new coffee setup I've got. It's really cool. I took a bag of fresh filter coffee and this is the filter and it literally just clips to your cup like so you fill it up with granules pour hot water on it bon appetit i took a long spork a titanium spork which is from wild camping international i took a wild international titanium pot that has a stove and another bic lighter in so this is the brs tiny 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 stove I also had gas, a little gas bottle. Right, we're getting to the final stage, which is the rear of the bike. I took these tail fin rear panniers that I'm trying to get to. And these clip off also really easily, but these are solid. These literally don't move either. I didn't think I'd ever find panniers this solid. Absolutely amazing. And these are fitted onto the aero pack, which is this system which is connected to your axle as you can see and it holds this rear pack obviously you get saddle bag there's loads of different brands out there and i've used different brands and i've never got on with them because you get so much tail wag you go to stand up in the saddle or put some power down um and this bag on that's connected to your saddle is just wagging you're trying to stuff stuff in it you've got to get it really well balanced otherwise it just doesn't pack well and it just looks awful and you've got to be very particular with them so i i just went off them saddle bags in general and i really love this i honestly love this system so much it's practically a saddle bag, but it's secure and it doesn't go anywhere. These are also 10 litres each, so you can tell that I took a lot of kit and it was mainly just food. But these are carbon and you can get them without these pannier fitments. You can also get aluminium ones also. Uh, and like I said, they're connected to your through axle, so it's not going anywhere. Obviously, if you do get a puncture or you need to remove your rear tire, you've got to unclip them from your axle and take the axle out. It isn't that much faff. Let's go through what I was running in my rear panniers. This one was actually all food. I think the back two, I just completely filled with food. I didn't want too much weight up the front because obviously you're steering and controlling the bike and through sand, uh, it's very difficult to steer and you lose balance. But I took a load of fire put meals. I took 12 dinners, I think it was. So I had 12 breakfasts, 12 dinners. I took some electrolytes and then a huge bag this was filled up and i think i had two of these that was just filled with bars chocolate gels just snacks for the trip um and i think i gauged i had about 2300 calories set for each day 10 liters filled up with food i had a wash kit which had a tiny little microfiber towel and wilderness wash this is both from valley and peak and i will link all of this stuff like i've said i had green people sun cream which is organic sun cream i had burt's bees lip balm i had anti-chafing gel I had pseudocrem, tissues, I had to take all my own tissues and toilet roll for the trip, smidge. As well as tissues, I took a cooler cloth. Moving on, I've got this little dental floss thing, toothpaste and toothbrush. Now I'm not one of those people that cut their toothbrushes in half. Wipes, nail clippers, safety pin, and this Arnica salve, which is like 
an actual magic potion which is really good stuff and then moving on to the other side this is another 10 litre that was fitted to this side of the rack and this was just filled with food that's obviously all gone now and this is completely empty that was filled with all of my freeze-dried meals right and finally my saddle bag from tailfin you can actually access it with this zip if you need to get something quick or you can unclip uh, the buckles. I mounted my shoes on here, uh, but you can also mount other stuff underneath it, like uh, the solar panel if the sun's coming from behind you, bits of clothes, food if you picked it up from a shop, that sort of thing. On the back, I've got my real light, if you can see that. This is an exposure light. Obviously, it's always good to have lights and be seen. And the event I'm doing now, you have to have a front and rear light it's a compulsory thing right let's take a look inside number one is electrics obviously filming and photographing my trip requires a lot more electrics than someone who doesn't so this is super heavy but i took a 26,000 and a 10,000 power bank. This is a Nightcore one and this is an Anchor one. And I had this one up front that the solar panel was connected to and this one would be in the back. But I'd have to charge my GoPro, my drone, my phone, my Wahoo, my Sony. Um, I didn't charge my Garmin in Reach. Combined with these two and my solar panel, that kept me going for 12 days, which is pretty impressive. And I actually charged it once at this little mountain hut. Uh, they connected it to their generator, which is really kind. I've got a head torch, all my spare cables and SIM cards and spare batteries, a mini tripod, my GoPro, and I also took a drone, a... DJI Mini 2 drone, Mini 3 actually. Moving on is clothes. As you can see, I had to pack so many clothes for this trip because it is a very cold and wet country. A fleece, a pair of leggings to sleep in. I took a buff. This was absolutely ideal for when I had sandstorms or when it was cold or when I couldn't sleep at night because it was so bright I put it over my eyes. I took a beanie because it was very cold in the evenings. I took a long sleeve uh, top to sleep in and also when it was cold. I also had a short sleeve version of that because we did actually get a few hot days. I took three pairs of darn tufts. I took a pack to my body warmer, like a gilet, with pockets to stuff stuff in. I took a specialised, like a windbreaker, a tail fin cap that you can wear underneath your helmet. As well as all of this, I took the two jackets, the warm jackets, because it was so cold, and two pairs of pack to mo bib shorts. And last but not least is this Apertura backpack. I had a camelback, as you can see. I had my Garmin in reach in here, which is emergency satellite phone. This side, I had earphones, tissue, and I also stored the camera that I'm filming on now. And then on the back of here, I had a filter that was slipped in on this side. So I had three litres of water on my back and inside the actual pack I had a Gore-Tex Pro jacket that's a mountain equipment one. This has never ever leaked. It's like a real winter mountain jacket and I wanted to take that because I just didn't want to get wet. If I didn't take that I think I'd have been soaked. And also uh, seven mesh waterproof trousers. These are Gore-Tex as well, Gore-Tex Pro, and I didn't get wet with them. They were also an insulation layer for my legs. As well as that, I took a bike pump, and this pump's bigger than what you can usually get, but the mini bike pumps that you buy are absolute shite. Excuse my French, but it's worth carrying a bigger pump just so you can actually pump your tires when you need to. Also, just as a thing for traveling, this is something that I was interested in. I took 
my bike in a cardboard box and travelled with that on the plane and that all went smoothly. I fitted a few bits of kit inside of that because it had to be under a weight limit. I also took this Ortleb duffel bag and this is 110 litres and I loaded it up with all my panniers um, so it all went in there and this was another check a check-in bag so that can be up to 23 kgs right but yeah I think that is everything I am now going to try and pack everything back into the bags uh, for the trip that I'm leaving on in four days time which I'm mega excited for and I will tell you more details about that in a couple of weeks time when I've got round to editing it all I hope you really enjoyed this video it was sort of rushed so please leave any questions if you have any I will hopefully be posting my ice and film next week so stay tuned for that but thank you again for watching thank you to all my patrons for making this possible it wouldn't be possible without you guys take care have a lovely rest of your weekend slash week and I will catch you in the next video all the best